My name is Timo Ratner, I work in the Department of Gastroenterology and the Ludwig Demel Center for Endoscopy at the Friedrich Alexander University Erlangen. And today I would like to introduce our work entitled In Vivo Real Time Assessment of Colorectal Polypistology Using an Optical Biopsy for Subsystem Based on Laser Induced Fluorescent Spectroscopy. The work is authored by myself and my colleagues Jan Tontini, Michael Fried, Andreas Nagel, Markus Neurath, and Helmut Neumann. In this study, we assessed the diagnostic performance of the WebSet4 system for predicting the histology of diminutive colorectal polyps, and we specifically asked whether the WebSet4 system meets the threshold criteria as set forth in the recent SGPB strategies to follow the so-called resect and discard strategy and the leave in place strategy. Now, first of all, uh, what is WebSet4? Uh, WebSet4 is an optical biopsy for system that consists of an optical fiber which is integrated into a standard biopsy forceps and a system console. Upon activation by a foot pedal, the optical fiber emits laser light with a wavelength of 337 nanometers. This laser light is then absorbed by the tissue or the polyp, which then produces an autofluorescent signal. This autofluorescence, or the spectral signature if you wish, um, is then detected and analyzed by the system console following a proprietary computer algorithm. And within one second, the system console displays the diagnostic output as a binary distinction into non-suspect or hyperplastic tissue and suspect or adenomatous tissue. Having that said, there are two important things about the WebSet4 system. First of all, um, the optical biopsy and the physical biopsy are taken with exactly the same forceps at the same locale, thereby reducing the occurrence of sampling errors. And second, since the diagnostic output is calculated following a proprietary computer algorithm, there is no such thing such as inter-observer or intra-observer variability. Now, what did we do? Um, we used this website for system to predict the histology of a total of 137 diminutive colorectal polyps in real time against histopathology as a reference standard. Uh, the polyps were fairly evenly distributed throughout the whole colon. And when assessing the diagnostic performance of um, WebSet4 for prediction of histology in these 137 polyps, a true positive rate or diagnostic sensitivity of 82%, a true negative rate or specificity of 85%, and an excellent negative prediction for ruling out adenomatous histology of 96% was obtained. Now, to follow the uh, reset and discard strategy, the ASGEP recommends a 90% or higher agreement for the assignment of post-polypathomy uh, surveillance intervals. And when comparing the post-polypathomy surveillance intervals as calculated by standard histopathology and the website for optical biopsy, we found an agreement of 89% and 85% when using recent US and European guidelines respectively. Since a lot of studies that assessed novel endoscopic techniques for the real-time prediction of polyp histology indeed focused on distal colorectal polyps. We performed a subgroup analysis in our cohort in, in which we took into account only polyps located in the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and the rectum. At these locales, we had uh, 68 polyps to include, and WebSet4 allowed the prediction of adenomatous histology with a sensitivity and specificity of 100% and 81%, and the negative um, prediction for ruling out adenomatous histology of 100%. And the agreement for the assignment of post polypathic surveillance intervals in distal colorectal polyps between WebSet4 and standard histopathology was 95% and 89% when using the recent US and European guidelines, respectively. Now, with this data, uh, we can conclude that laser induced fluorescent spectroscopy with WebSet4 is able to rule out adenomatous histology with very high negative prediction and can accurately predict colonoscopy surveillance intervals following polyp removal. And thereby, as suggested from the data of this pilot study, WebSet4 appears to be accurate enough to follow the recently proposed ASGEP strategies for the handling of diminutive colorectal polyps. Thank you very much.